So our next presenter is uh, Bart van der Poel from TNO, Netherlands. Uh, he's a team lead uh, for the urban strategy team and he's, he's developing and, and implementing the urban strategy toolbox in cities worldwide. Uh, so he's also discussing a part of the toolbox de development. Uh, so um, uh, Bart, floor is yours. Thank you. Um, my name is Bart van der Poel. I am a uh, project manager and team lead for our strategy team at TNO. And I'm going to talk about, well, holistic fact-based planning and operation of zero emission buses in an urban environment, which is a very long and a slightly vague title, but I will explain later what it means. Um, so first a short, um, Introduction for people who don't know, I'm from TNO, which is uh, the Netherlands' largest applied research organization. Uh, we were established by law in uh, 1932. And we basically, our goal is to bridge the gap between the academia and the, and the industry. So we basically, we are an organization that uh, tries to make science applic applicable for society. Um, so we are on our mission to connect basically people and knowledge and to create innovation for um, to boost the competitive strength of the industry and society uh, and well-being of society basically we are in a, we are founded by law and we are an independent organization and not for profit organization um, so basically that means there's a law that says that TNO exists but we are not a government organization we do a lot of research also for the government. And we do that with well, over more than uh, 3000 uh, scientists and uh, also a lot of other people that are uh, involved. So I'm not sure if these presentations all will be shared, but there are some links below that I can, uh, that you can click to learn a little bit more. Um, Tino's has nine units. I'm from the unit traffic and transport. So basically, we are uh, mostly about uh, smart and sustainable mobility. And uh, well, basically, when we talk about smart and sustainable mobility, we talk about safe and efficient, sustainable and comfortable traffic and transport uh, by balancing the interactions between the humans, the vehicles and the environment. So basically, we have a uh, we have two integrated roadmap roadmaps that are uh, one uh, roadmap is called uh, sustainable and one's roadmap is called smart um, and they both uh, apply to mobility and logistics and then we have basically we just do three levels with them on the at the bottom we have the uh, the vehicle level uh, on top of that we have the mobility and uh, um, logistics so basically the system level and then on top there's the system of systems level where we talk about society um, if we're talking about um, zero emission buses then uh, we can make this a little more um, concrete um, so when we have our when we have a holistic view on zero emission buses we say we want clean, accessible, and sustainable, and a comfortable city. Um, and so, I will take you on a, on a smart tour on a uh, on, on a project we did in, uh, in Singapore, where we want to go onto the transition from uh, diesel buses, over five thousand of them, to um, a complete electric bus fleet. And so. Basically, what we did is uh, on the different levels, we created tools to support um, the whole process, basically. Um, so that means that we start at the, uh, at the vehicle level, then we go to the systems level, and at the end, we are going to the systems of systems level, so the, the, the city level. Um, this is more about sustainable. So 
on the smart side, you would have uh, like connected and automated buses. Um, we are not, I'm not going to talk about that. We are more on the sustainable side. So uh, the integration of electric vehicles <clears throat> and the effect they would have on charging infrastructure, uh, electricity demand, things like that. So when we are going to transition to, uh, to electric buses, then, um, then we have quite a few uh, things to consider. So on the, on the one hand, we have got the technology uh, part. So there are uh, many different vehicle types uh, already available, battery sizes. Um, we've got chargers, uh, grid connections, everything that's uh, technically related, um, we have to put in our uh, in our tooling uh, and we have to work with it. Then on the other side, we have the operational level where we say, all right, there is this uh, bus schedules that are need to be run, the service level, uh, people to run it, there are routes, um, there are timetables. And, and there, between the two, there can be a lot of things optimized. In the vehicle planning, for example, when you switch from, uh, well, everybody knows, when you switch from diesel to electric buses, um, these electric buses need to be charged and uh, charging takes time. So that will in influence your timetables and your vehicle planning and things like that. Then, of course, there are the, uh, the local conditions you have to consider. So local conditions uh, are the passenger loads, uh, the cityscape, the weather, other traffic, and, uh, and obviously the stakeholders, uh, manufacturers, suppliers, uh, financial institution, grid operators, operators, authorities, uh, and the passengers themselves. And also there um, can be optimization stages that we need to include. So, and to measure all this, we have to define uh, KPIs to uh, assess whether or not we are doing the right thing. So basically, there we can look at a different level. We can look at the costs. Uh, we buy uh, an amount of buses. What will they cost? We they uh, they they need electricity. What will it cost? What is the service level we want? How many land? use uh, doing uh, is needed by putting all the charging infrastructure there. Uh, what does it mean for noise, uh, for risk, for safety, pollution, things like that. So when we did this whole uh, planning thing, we built, we, we started basically at the vehicle level, uh, which is the V bus. So we have uh, already quite a lot of uh, electric buses, uh, existing electric buses. They all have a, a powertrain and they all have secondary auxiliary uh, services running in them. So what we did, we created energy models for um, for the bus consumption. So the driving of the bus, the, the traction, uh, inertia, the uh, uh, resistance. Uh, things like that. Then, on the other hand, on the vehicle, still on the vehicle level, we also have the uh, the secondary system, so the environmental system, um, the uh, air conditioning, um, which are, can be in, in especially in uh, in Singapore, can be quite energy consuming. And then we take these individual buses, we put a battery in them, and then we create a fleet of those buses. So what we then put in there is the, um, we, we, we put in all the, the bus schedules and the, uh, and the routes. Uh, so, and, and we create, and, and, and the charging infrastructure, and then we created models for it, uh, where we, uh, and then we ran the simulation, we, we created all the KPIs um, on the fleet level. And then basically, we can start to iterate and optimize. So, uh, for example, we have a several bus lines. We could say, all right, let's let's try to electrify certain bus lines. What will happen? Uh, will the buses run empty? Uh, can they run? 
uh, will will the, when the, when they are charging, will there be enough charging poles at a certain location? Or, you know, can the grid handle the The, the electricity demand, also the local uh, climate, the, the weather during the day, the when the temperature goes up uh, and it's hot, the air conditioning will start to work harder. Is the um, is the the energy demand of the bus itself? Uh, do we need to adjust the schedule to uh, make sure it also runs during those those peak levels? Also, when there are more passengers and there's a lot of weight in there. So we created a system where we can basically iterate and optimize the whole uh, fleet. So, which is quite nice. And we actually can do a lot there yet, but it's not uh, really holistic because the, um, the fleet level optimum is basically, well, probably, most likely not the city level optimum. And uh, also the optimum right now is likely not the optimum of the future. So in order to make the connection between the, uh, between the fleet level, which is basically about simulation, uh, simulating assets and schedules, we also need to take a look at other domains uh, in which these buses operate uh, on the city level. And for that, we created basically uh, a, a platform, a multi-domain platform uh, where we can simulate, uh, where we can create digital city twins. Um, so uh, that means we can have a city and we can simulate several aspects of the city in different kinds of models. So um, we, we basically what we do is we combine a bunch of models. Uh, one of them is the electrical bus model. We combine them with uh, models for environment, air pollution. We combine them with uh, traffic models. We combine them with um, uh, models for noise, model for uh, demand, models for electricity. Uh, and, and we can combine those with uh, data. Uh, city data can be real-time data, can be um, uh, uh, artificial data, can be can be uh, bus schedules, traffic models, and stuff. And then we combine those um, on a high-speed uh, application that actually exchanges all this data and then let the models calculate all the. Uh, KPIs that we need, and then uh, uh, output them through all kind of interfaces. So basically, what we do is say we have these multi-domain challenges. We that only want to uh, um, transition to an electrical bus fleet, but we also make uh, want to make the city more livable for everyone, and we want to reduce uh, the air pollution, and we want to reduce noise. And so we combine those different models into urban strategy platform, uh, use uh, fast GPU parallel computing, and um, to, to basically combine all of those models to have a, a true holistic view of the city. So how does that look for electric buses? So this is an example in Singapore. All the dots on the side, you uh, uh, the yellow and the green dots, those are all kind of, uh, those are all electric buses um, with uh, various state of charges. So uh, um, this is basically the vehicle level um, where we uh, put a, uh, where we change uh, electric bus to, uh, a bus to an electric bus, put a battery in it and, um, and let it drive around for all day according to a special schedule. So what you see is uh, in the in the time at the bottom there's a bar which indicates the um, the lowest charged bus, uh, where the black bar means that the buses are really uh, empty at that point. Um, and we can look at the individual buses, but we also can look at the charging infrastructure. So 
we can place charging infrastructure in the city. We can uh, charge there. We can define different type of chargers. And then we can uh, take a look at the power consumption of those chargers. We can take a look at the occupancy of those chargers. Are there enough charging poles? Are there enough parking spaces uh, on those depots? And um, so we, we created these this, this models within our urban strategy platform to, um, to basically dimension the whole fleet. Uh, we can derive all kinds of KPIs from that, uh, from uh, more technical KPIs like uh, minimum state of charge, critical hours, uh, uh, energy demand, but also financial KPIs like um, operational costs, uh, uh, TCO calculations. And then what we do is say, We've got the urban strategy platform with all the all the uh, different kind of models. We've got uh, mobility demand. We've got traffic models. We can have micro simulation, uh, air, noise, safety, uh, energy, uh, health, electric bus. And we say, all right, we've got this electric bus simulation. Let's connect this electric bus simulation to the uh, to the whole traffic system. So. What does it mean? How does the, uh, the introduction of those bus lines, the, the, the whole public transport system, how does it interact with the rest of the traffic system? Uh, and with the demand of, of uh, mobility, for example, if we say, if we increase the, um, it's nothing to do with electrical buses, but if we increase the um, rate of the public transport, the, the frequency of the public transport, will it shift traffic to uh, public transport instead of people using cars? On the other hand, we can also say, well, if we change, go from electrical buses to, from diesel buses to electrical buses, we, it will have effect on, on the air pollution. Uh, depending on the speed might also have effect on the, on the noise levels. So we can also combine the air pollution models and the noise models with our electric bus. Sorry, Bart. Uh, could you please wrap up in three minutes? Yes, I was always there. I'm almost there. Thank you. The, uh, the environmental impact, then we can calculate health KPIs from that. Um, when we're talking about electrical buses, we also have uh, the effect energy consumption and then we have a model for solar potential so can we create extra energy on the rooftops to um, to provide extra energy for the charging locations so what we do in the urban strategy platform is basically we combine all these models to a single system so this is what we did for uh, for example on Curacao where we say all right we have a traffic network we have got the air modules and the noise pollution and then we combine it with the uh, with the EV tooling, so that we can actually start planning um, the whole transition, the the energy transition and the mobility transition by modeling both the energy system and the mobility system, adding charging infrastructure and buses to the uh, uh, to the models, and start calculating KPIs and what are the best options. When we are talking about these, these kinds of models that we can use, there are, are quite a few developments going on right now. So one thing is uh, the simulation of electrical buses, but what we really want to do is also have more uh, macro level simulations of electrical vehicles so that we can say, for example, uh, the penetration of electrical vehicle vehicles will increase, what will it mean for electricity demand in certain areas? Um, or where, where, are our, where do we need to put our charging infrastructure? Also, new mobility um, with self-driving cars is uh, something we are looking into right now. Public transport, multi-user class, so basically we can split uh, the, the vehicle types into different types, so electrical buses, um, 
electrical scooters, electrical logistics, uh, electrical cars. Traffic safety, of course, is, an, uh, is a, a, an issue where we are developing models for right now. Logistics and hubs are, um, are things we are working on. And the social inclusion, um, how accessible are all these um, services for, for people? And does everyone has access to, for, for example, public transport or charging locations? Uh, health, spatial, real-time data, and uh, our biggest um, uh, challenge is the basically optimization, where we are starting to use AI to iterate uh, solutions to come up with a um, uh, with the optimum solution. So instead of creating scenarios, we want to say to the system, what's the best scenario that we can have and how can we do that? So that's about it. Uh, I think you, if you have any questions, please let me know.